Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Good afternoon and thank you for being home uh, in such difficult times. I'm Fabio Mandrile and uh, I will explain to you something about my PhD topic, which is how to integrate more renewables in the power system using virtual synchronous generators. We will start from an introduction, speaking what the renewable energy sources are and why it's not easy to integrate them in the power system. Uh, then we will go deeper into the topic and see what are virtual synchronous generators or VSG and how can they, they can support integration of renewables and even enhance the stability of the power system. So as you may all know, we are now facing some decarbonization requirements. And uh, this means that we are phasing out traditional generation, such as uh, coal-based or oil-based, towards uh, uh, renewable energies, and uh, in particular, wind and uh, solar power. Uh, these uh, sources are quite promising because the technology is becoming more and more mature, and uh, they are peculiar because they are interfaced to the electric uh, grid by using a power electronics converter, so uh, an inverter, basically. Uh, however, the power system, uh, how it was designed uh, more or less 100 years ago, uh, was designed uh, uh, to guarantee a certain power quality, uh, and this power quality is uh, needed to, for a correct operation of it. And uh, power quality means basically a stable frequency, so for example 50 Hz in Europe, and this means that at every instant the generation, the active power of the generation and the demand is balanced. Otherwise uh, the frequency will uh, shift and deviate uh, from uh, the nominal point. Then we require a high quality voltage both in uh, terms of amplitude and in term terms of harmonic distortion. So this means we want something like this and not something like this. And finally, we also want uh, very high short circuit currents in case of uh, short circuit faults, because we want to trigger uh, uh, protection devices to isolate the fault, to clear the fault uh, and uh, uh, solve the issue. Uh, today, renewable energy sources, for example, uh, solar panels, they are faced to the grid with the converter, that VPT uh, algorithm. So uh, at every instant, they try to maximize the exploitation of the source by maximizing the power flow towards the grid. The problem is that this technique uh, doesn't allow a regulation of the power flow. So as much as we can, we inject into the grid. And uh, the amount of injection depends, for example, on the weather conditions or uh, the environmental conditions. But this is not what the power system was designed for. In fact, uh, in the past and also today, uh, power plants such as coal or oil powered, they are interfaced using alternators, so very large electrical machines, and uh, they feature several characteristics. In particular, they are programmable, so we can change the amount of fuel and therefore we can change the amount of active power injected into the grid. Then, since they are electrical machines, they have a virtual rotor, so this means mechanical inertia. So when we change the frequency, because the load change or the generation change, we can use, the, we can exploit the, um, the kinetic energy of the rotor to balance uh, the power uh, in, uh, in a transient way. Finally, they, uh, they are designed mechanically and electrically to provide a sinusoidal voltage with a very high quality. On the other hand, uh, converters and the renewable energy systems, as we have seen, are not programmable because they depend on the weather as they are controlled today. They don't feature mechanical inertia because there are no moving parts. Take the example of solar panels. For example, for, for wind turbines is a bit different, but let's take the case of solar panels. And since they are interfaced, uh, interfaced with, uh, with a power converter, there is a, a harmonic content and there is harmonic distortion, which can be um, not beneficial for the power grid. 
This means that we risk uh, some uh, stability and integration issues. Especially we have problems if the share of renewables becomes very large, so prevalent. That's what I, what I said towards a 100% renewable based power system. Uh, then how can we provide uh, similar features as these synchronous machines, but using static converters and, for example, solar panels? Here comes the concept of uh, virtual synchronous generator. So basically we want to make a power converter behave as a synchronous machine. This way we can provide the so-called ancillary services which uh, uh, can uh, help uh, guaranteeing the power quality. Uh, especially, uh, we can provide inertial behavior, so support to the frequency, reactive support, so reactive power transfer to support the voltage, harmonic compensation, and we can also provide the higher short circuit currents. Moreover, since we are dealing with a control, a controller strategy, we are not changing the hardware, we can uh, um, implement uh, uh, some models, some virtual models, which can even be better than synchronous generators because we are dealing with ideal model, not with physical machines with physical constraints. So we can exclude some of the drawbacks of synchronous generators. Going more into detail of uh, how uh, VSG works, basically there are two parts. An hardware part, which is an inverter, like you can see here, this is from our lab. And uh, this inverter is a current controlled. So it behaves as an ideal current source connected to the grid. The reference, the current inverter from the part, which is, which is executed for example, on a microcontroller. And uh, these control part uh, embeds the model of the VSG. So, models like this motor and uh, uh, therefore manage the active power transfer. So, just like her, since it's a virtual rotor, it also embeds inertial effect. Here you can see what inertial effect means uh, with experimental results. Here is a test we run in our lab and we emulated with a grid emulator a frequency in the grid. For example, this can happen when a very large generating plant goes and goes to a steady state value after and also therefore synchronous generators uh, proportional to the opposite of the frequency derivative so inertial effect and uh, as you can see this is what it happens and this is exactly as it would happen with the real synchronous generator the goal is to uh, increase this minimum point so to make it uh, higher and to reduce the frequency derivative therefore we can avoid the black Outs or uh, uh, not desired intervention of, of uh, frequency protections. So block is uh, the virtual state or virtual reactive inductive impedance, and this is uh, basically in charge of the harmonic compensation. Uh, it means that, that, for example, if we have uh, an harmonic content for example here we you can see uh, a fifth harmonic it's very common to have a fifth harmonic into the grid if we switch on the virtual synchronous generator as you can see we can reduce this harmonic distortion so we can obtain a better po power quality moreover since this is a virtual impedance we can tune the parameters and uh, we can tune the amount of power uh, of harmonic compensation by changing the inductance, the virtual inductance of this uh, virtual machine. Finally, we have uh, the excitation control block, which is in charge of the reactive power flow to towards the grid, and it also provides uh, reactive support during faults. 
This means that, for example, when we have uh, a voltage dip, so the voltage, as you can see here from the positive envelopes of the, of the voltage, as uh, soon as the voltage drops, uh, for example, for a fault into the, into the grid, uh, then we inject the reactive power, reactive current, to uh, both trigger because they over current is a little bit. This injection has two peculiarities. First one, it must be limited. It must be limited because it has to comply with the converter power rating. So we don't want to break the semiconductor devices. And then it can be tuned. So the, the, the length of this, uh, in time of this reactive support comes with a tunable parameters to change the grid side behavior of this system. And this is not something we can do with real synchronous machines. This is why I say that virtual synchronous machines are even better than synchronous machines because they can uh, feature better performance since we are dealing with an ideal model, not a real model. We have tunable parameters. We can change them even online with adaptive tuning. For example, if the grid conditions change, then we can change the parameters. Here you can see an example. Again, it's, a, it's an inertial behavior, as you have seen before. And uh, in yellow, you can see the, the behavior of a real synchronous generator. So you can see these huge power oscillations. They are not good because we don't want an oscillating power towards the grid. Virtual synchronous generators, they don't have this because they have a virtual model which can solve the problems that lead to these oscillations. To sum up, uh, the com a comparison between virtual synchronous generators and synchronous generators. Virtual synchronous generators, they can provide inertia, as you have seen, but they need a storage system for, for the energy. I mean, we, we need uh, this energy from somewhere. In synchronous generators, they come from the rotor, from the kinetic energy of the rotor. Uh, they can provide harmonic compensation and it's tunable because we can change software parameters. While in synchronous generators, it only depends on the physical parameters of the machine. So we cannot change it after, after it's done. They can provide reactive support uh, and reactive power management. And uh, the only drawback of VSGs is that they have a limited short circuit current injection. And this is uh, related to the shorter uh, time constants of the semiconductor devices compared to those uh, of uh, uh, real synchronous machines. Uh, uh, for example, a semiconductor device is very small, a uh, synchronous machine is huge and it's made of copper and iron, so the time constant and the overload capability is much higher. Uh, however, this is not a real problem because you have to imagine that in the grid there are thousands of generators. So a huge short circuit current is made with a limited contribution from each of them. So it's very difficult that uh, we need a current injection higher than the one. So this is not really a problem. Finally, uh, what we have seen, we have seen that uh, uh, if we want to integrate more renewables, then uh, we will have some stability issues related to how they are controlled. So uh, in the future, converters for renewables will uh, be required to provide some ancillary grid services to contribute to the stability of the power system. In this aspect, the VSGs can improve this behavior and can be therefore a uh, valid solutions. Even also because they, they it can even behave better than synchronous machines. And uh, in all these, my role, so basically why am I getting my salary, is uh, that I try to improve VSG models. So I try to find new equations, better equations for those blocks you have seen before. I try to, to make simplify models for uh, system level studies. So we cannot, uh, we, we have uh, maybe several generation plans and we want, uh, for example, a very short simulation. So we need simplify model to reduce the computational burden. And connected to this, there is the stability and interaction analysis of system with multiple VSGs. 
So let, let's see what happens if we have more VSGs together. Are they interacting in a destructive way? Are they not? And so on. So this is all from my side. Thank you very much. And I think you are free to ask questions. Okay, so unfortunately in these conditions we cannot provide uh, any applause for the speaker. Uh, <laughs> as I said before, uh, you can uh, find in your interface a raise your hand button so I can understand who wants to ask a question. And I already see Yuri has a question. So Yuri, please. So thank you Fabio for your talk. Uh, there was some problem with the connection, so I didn't understand very well slides number 14 and 15. Can you please just uh, repeat what is said and try to explain again? Yes, okay. Yes, so 14 and 15, thank you. Okay, can you see them now? Yes, okay. Yes. So, uh, um, here um, in this slide we were looking at the third block, third uh, important block of a VSG, which is the excitation control, which manages the reactive power flow towards the grid and the behavior during grid faults. A grid fault is uh, a voltage dip, so a reduction in the voltage, a very sudden reduction in the voltage. And uh, as you can see here in our lab, and uh, you can see here the amplitude of the voltage, like this. In this case, a VSG injects current, reactive power, into the grid to trigger protection devices. So protection devices are overcurrent device, short circuit current device, so they need current to be triggered. And this injection is made uh, with uh, two features. So the first one is the limitation of its amplitude because we have to comply with uh, uh, the rating, the, the current rating of the semiconductor devices, not to break them. And then we can tune the duration of this uh, support, reactive support and the injection with a tunable time constant, which is part of that excitation block. And it's a software parameter, it's a number so we can easily change it. I hope it's, uh, it answered your question and I hope internet connection was, was fine this time. Yes, far better, thank you very much. Okay, You're so welcome. let's check. I don't see any more hands, so I guess uh, I will ask uh, a question to you. Um, could you apply this system in current grids I mean, are they compliant to the current uh, electrical standards that are enforced uh, in uh, electrical grids uh, at the moment? Yes. Well, um, there are two uh, problems to tackle here. Uh, first uh, is the, let's say, the, um, the slow behavior. So, uh, for example, like this. Here you can see that here you can see the time scale is uh, tenths of seconds. And here we have some grid standards, for example, the transmission system operator standards, for example, in Italy, it's Terna, and they require a certain behavior. Then, uh, since we are dealing with power converters, we uh, have to comply with uh, international standards related uh, to uh, the converter itself. So, for example, harmonic emissions, high frequency harmonic emissions, but high frequency, I mean uh, hundreds of kilohertz. Control must be with uh, the TSO uh, standards, so uh, grid standards. The power converter must comply with, uh, uh, for example, harmonic standards. So we have uh, these two parts. Uh, our solutions, so the solutions we, uh, I have developed during my PhD, they comply with uh, uh, grid standards and uh, they can be implemented on any commercial inverter with uh, just a, a software modification. So it is not difficult to implement this solution on a real product, a commercial product. So the most, the most recent technical standards, yes. Okay, and are there any companies that are uh, uh, using your model or uh, competing models? Uh, not now, not at the moment. Uh, I know that for example, ABB, which is uh, let's say uh, a huge uh, company in the 
field. They are investigating these uh, technologies, but uh, I think companies are at the moment still reluctant to, to this technology because it's something relatively new. So uh, I think a very important uh, uh, aspect of uh, university and research so to make real to make them a real uh, let's say fuel for the renewable energy transition.